Do you like plants? They're alright. Do you want a robot plant? What? What is a robot? That's a good question, but one that's a little bit harder to answer than you might first think. Today, virtually every robot is digital. They use a bunch of ones and zeros stored inside of some type of tiny computer to do their thinking. However, there have been other attempts made to construct the brains of robots in slightly different methods. One of them was BEAM. BEAM uses a series of electronic neurons, usually analog, connected together much the same way as a biological brain function. During the microcontroller dark ages that were the 70s and 80s, Beam promised an alternative route that robotics could take. Unfortunately, this proved short-lived. Beam proved difficult to scale, and its analog hardwired nature was difficult to model and build. But just as this was starting to slip out of the research halls of governments and universities, there was another group of individuals that decided to pick up the Beam torch and run with it. These were makers and artists who took the Beam ethos and designs and they went in a little bit of a different direction. This more abstract branch of Beam Robotics has several different types, some of which I've built on this channel before, like my robotic head, this little guy, and several others. But what I'm going to be building today is called a Pummer. These are a little robot that's solar powered and it sits there absorbing light during the day and then blinks an LED in a specific way during the night. And the great thing about these is that the circuits are relatively simple, usually, but it gives you a huge amount of flexibility in how to build the robot and you can build, design basically anything you want. It can be something as simple as this, which incorporates a solar cell, some freeform electronics, and a huge natural crystal, something like that, an incredibly clean, simple design, tiny little one on a coin, or whatever this is. Now, building these circuits can be a little bit challenging because you have to design a circuit which is incredibly efficient to be able to charge up off of tiny little solar cells and operate as long as it can into the night. Now, several designs out there work really well. However, many of them are quite complicated, especially the voltage controlling and the voltage regulating sections. So I wanted to come up with a tiny little circuit that would fit everything onto a single chip and still be efficient enough to last for quite a while into the night. So our pummer needs a couple different parts of its circuit. It needs a way to charge up during the day and then turn itself on at night and then do whatever action it's gonna do. In my case, blink an LED. So charging up is fairly easy. We just have a little three volt solar cell charging a one farad capacitor, super cap in this case, through a diode. Now turning it on at night is not that hard. All we have to do is take the reference point on the solar cell side of the diode here, feed that into an inverter, and then we ground this or pull this low through a really big resistor. That means during the daytime, while this is charging, the voltage this will see will be high. This will be pretty much as positive as it can be. Um, and this will be switched low. Our output will be negative. As the voltage on the solar cell starts to drop, as we get, you know, it gets darker out, this will see a lower and lower voltage as it pulls that down until eventually it gets below its switching point and then this goes high, turning our circuit on. This is pretty simple. It's not the most efficient system because of course we have a resistor across our uh, solar cell so that will be losing some voltage there but this is pretty big and in fact you can size this even larger at the expense of a slightly darker turn on point. Once we have that, well how do we blink our LED? Luckily we can use another inverter to do exactly that. So if you have an inverter, building an oscillator is actually super easy to do. It's one of the first things you learn in electronics class. I think, I never actually took electronics class. But all you have to do is connect your output of your inverter to your input through a resistor, and then also connect that input through a capacitor to a reference point, in our case positive. Now, this will always want to switch its output to be the opposite of the input. So it'll just flip back and forth. However, this capacitor here will charge up and discharge and change that kind of reference point it gets, which will slow down our oscillation and allow us to have any period we want within reason. Now I use a pretty big resistor here and a pretty small capacitor, which lets me have a relatively long turn off, turn on point, about every couple seconds. And that gives our 
um, oscillator a little bit more of an interesting characteristic. This will work. You can just connect an LED straight out here into ground, but I didn't want that. I wanted a quick turn on and then a slow delay on my LED. So we can do that by just connecting another capacitor here to our LED, and that will mean that when it turns on, that will charge up, and then it will slowly discharge through the LED, and then it'll wait until it switches again the next time. How do we turn this on and off? Well, if we're using just one chip, which I want to do, and our inverter that switches everything on is on the same chip, wouldn't this be on all the time as well? Well, it would be. And I did think about this a little bit, and I came up with the circuit down below where I integrate everything together in one chip, and I'm able to turn on and off these circuits as I want. And here we have one of my favorite chips to use, a lovely little 74HC14, a little hex Schmidt trigger inverter circuit. On this side, we have our original turn on and off circuit. And then I have one of these outputs coupled into another one. So this gives me two different um, output voltages. So when this is turned on, it'll have a low and a high on this side. So I connect the LED into one of these, and that'll mean that when this is daytime, this will see only positive voltages and it won't turn on at all. That works, but actually I'm still gonna be oscillating this, which is not ideal. But I figured out if I take this point here and connect a little diode, that means that this will basically pull this reference voltage down all the way to ground during the daytime when this is low, and it won't be able to switch at all, which will save me a lot of energy. I won't be turning on and off any of these circuits at all when, I'm, um, when it's charging up. This will be discharging a little bit of current through this 10 mega ohm resistor here, but it will be negligible, way less than I'm losing through this 100K here. And that means that when this is charging up during the day, nothing will happen. When it switches on at night, this will go high, which will mean that this doesn't see anything anymore because it's uh, blocking the, the current. Um, this will turn on and our diode will see negative, and this will start blinking. Once this all gets set up and turning on, it'll run for as long as there's charge in my capacitor, or it's dark. If you turn on the lights, well, suddenly this will see a high voltage on this reference point again, and the circuit will switch off. Now there's a couple of cool things to note about this. Each of these oscillators only uses one inverter, and I actually have three extra here, so I can blink three LEDs all at different rates. So that's how this circuit's all gonna work. I've managed to fit this all into one chip. Pretty happy with how it works. Now let's go and build it. The build went about the same as most of my freeform beam projects. I bent all the pins of the main chip out flat, and then based the build around that and my rather fat supercapacitor. By bending the pins out and building from the top, I was able to basically copy my circuit diagram directly onto this chip, which made the build relatively straightforward. Now, earlier I asked the question, what is a robot? And to be honest, I don't think that these things qualify as robots. They're robotics inspired, certainly, and use many of the same build techniques, but I think they classify more as something like the strand beast than a real robot. These are more designed for their artistic value, interest, or possibly just aesthetics. And the functions, although based on robotics projects, are not strictly robotics. This circuit itself might not really have any practical use, but it is a very interesting little project and it's quite fun and does have a lot of little things and tweaks you can do to make the circuit more interesting and more dynamic. Because this is solar powered I can basically leave it somewhere and never touch it again which means that this might end up lasting for years especially that there's no real volatile batteries or chemicals in it and no moving parts so there's basically nothing to wear out. Sure the components will have some wear and tear simply from existing, but this will be very minor, and one of these could end up lasting for decades. One of the interesting things about this little circuit here is you can have multiple of these blinking LEDs all set up, and by using different values of capacitors and resistors, you can have them blink out of sync with each other. 
However, because these are all powered off of one chip, they will sort of influence each other. So if you have very close values on your capacitors and your resistors, they may end up falling into sync with each other. I use quite different values for mine and three LEDs and circuits in total. To make it a little bit more dynamic, I actually included a little CDS photocell in line with one of the resistors, which will mean that when it's very dark, that circuit will barely blink at all, and when it's just turned off, it'll blink quite quickly. After that was done, I encased it inside of this little waterproof jar, and I'll be able to put it outside on my porch and leave it there forever. And that wraps up another video. If there's any other specific beam robots, designs, or projects you'd like to see me tackle, please leave it down in the comments below. I hope you found that enjoyable. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.